Hi guys, welcome back. I'm actually filming from a travel lodge in York, or just outside of York. Um, I'm away with the missus for a couple of days, so I don't have my original setup, I don't have my lights, so sorry about the lighting, sorry about the angle, I'm having to make do. Um, but I wanted to talk about the transfers today. And as ever, before we get into the video, please, if you could like and subscribe, it helps me massively, it helps me to carry on making these videos. And it helps me to let me know that you're enjoying the content and you want to see more of it. Um, any suggestions that you might want to see, any videos, let me know down in the comments below. Um, big day for Blues today. A uh, very exciting day. Um, we've actually managed to make two signings. Uh, we knew that these were coming. Uh, we've been told that players were coming in. And let's be, let's be honest, we really needed those numbers in. Um, and I think they're two really exciting players that we've now signed. Um, Obviously, we're looking at young, fresh talent. Um, I think the squad needed this injection of sort of youthfulness. Um, so let's get straight into them. First signing is uh, Connor Mahoney. Again, don't have a go at me for those pronunciations. Um, the 21-year-old has joined on loan from Bournemouth for a full season. Um, a bit of an unknown quantity, I would say. Not really had much experience in the league. Um, he's not really had much experience anywhere. However, looks an exciting prospect. Looks a good talent. Um, started his career out at Blackburn um, in 2013. Uh, sorry, through his youth career, but then went to Accrington, um, where he spent the first part of the 2013 season. Um, before then, moving back to Blackburn to go through their development squad. Uh, he spent three seasons at Blackburn, uh, making various first team appearances here and there. Obviously, only being 17, 18, 19, so really still a young talent. Um, and then when Blackburn were relegated in 2017, uh, he turned down a contract there, supposedly, and left, and then signed for Bournemouth. Compensation was agreed, various different places. Um, and then was sent out to Barnsley at the end of last season, only making four appearances, though. Um, but he is also an England under-20 international, uh, under-21 international. Um, <clears throat> so he's clearly, he's clearly valued. Um, I think... From the general consensus at Bournemouth, uh, they, they, they seem to rate him quite highly. Obviously, for a Premier League team to have took a punt on him uh, two seasons ago, or a season ago, uh, they must see something in him. Uh, and considering we haven't seen that much of him, uh, Gary Monk must know something about him, must have been scouted. Uh, so, I'm, I thought I'm quite excited about this one. Um, I can't see him being the first teamer just yet. Obviously, Mags and Hotter. Is he really going to dispossess those? I don't think so. So he's a good option. Obviously, I think he'll play at Reading next week uh, in the Cup. And he's going to be a good option off the bench for now. Who knows if he turns out to be some next level star. Then, obviously, he's going to start earning his place. And he could be a starter. So, fingers crossed that this one works out. Um, but it's a really exciting prospect. And the second player, probably the most anticipated one, is... I said the return, the return of Omar Bogle. Now this one's got a lot of Blues fans excited, uh, and me for one as well. Um, I don't mean to be smug, but I did call it on my transfer video last week. If you haven't already checked that out, there's some more names that I'd like to see us go after. Who knows? Could get it. But Omar Bogle is returning another season-long loan from Cardiff. Um, and this one, I think... I have a gut feeling that this one is going to be really good signing for us. Some would, I, I said last week that he offers something that we don't have, but I suppose we do. He's quick, he's agile, he's athletic, uh, he's strong, he's powerful. I suppose we have a bit of that in Isaac Bissell and a bit of that in Shea Adams, but I think he's the full package. I think given a run of games, he's going to score us some goals, and he's going to offer us real firepower up front, which is what we need. Um, and he also boasts a fairly impressive record, uh, starting out his career at Hinckley, uh, scoring three goals in eight games, so a fairly short career, before moving to Solihull Moors, and which there he scored uh, 62 goals in 111 games. So that's, that's a ratio better than one in every two. Uh, so that's a really good record, um, and it speaks for itself really. He then earned a move to Grimsby, uh, where he played... I believe, don't quote me on this, I have a statistic wrote down somewhere. Uh, scoring 32 in 68, again a really impressive record for him to boast. 
So those records speak for themselves. Sorry if you can hear any noise. Um, windows open, it's a bit hot. Uh, scoring 32 in 68, again, it's another impressive record. Uh, so he then earned his big move to um, to championship side Wigan at the time in 2017. Um, I think the fee was something around a million pounds, something like that. Uh, but he only managed to knock up uh, 14 appearances, scoring three. Not that bad, one in every four, one in four ish and I don't think he was a regular there so it's not bad again um, and then he was snapped up by Cardiff uh, when Wigan went down uh, and he managed 10 appearances there and three goals again that's better than one in four so it's not a bad ratio and Cardiff fans from my understanding from what I've been hearing today um, and all the comments I've been reading they rated him highly they thought he was a really good striker they thought he could have been given more of a chance uh, but reportedly had a falling out last year following a red card at Bristol. Um, so my view on these two signings, I'm really excited to see them. Uh, obviously, they're not going to go straight into the starting lineup. Can't see that happening. Uh, but overall, it just gives us that little bit of depth. I think we were looking at the wingers, obviously after Viv's performance at the weekend and scoring a goal. <laughs> Who knows? He could be thrown in uh, at some point. But these just offer good depth. My worry is that if we had injuries, if we'd have lost. Shay, for example, at the weekend, who would we have put up front? We'd only have Duke now, uh, but now we've got Bogle coming in, another good option. Mahoney coming in as a backup for Hata or Magoma at the moment. Uh, and hopefully, rumour has it, three more coming through the door with potentially Lee Camp coming in. Um, a little bit uninspiring, but what can we expect in the current predicament? I, I, I don't know. Um, he offer, he's got a lot of championship experience. Teams seem to keep um, taking a go, taking a punt on him. I suppose it's the lower teams, but he seems to get, you know, clubs in the championship. So I don't know about that one. I would think it would be a backup for Connell Truman. But honestly, guys, let me th let me know down below what you think uh, about these two signings. I'm really impressed. I think it's really good business from Gary Monk. I think he knows what he wants. They all play his way. I think he plays a certain way. And they offer that youthful vibrance that I think, you know, he, he talks about. He wants these young, hungry players. And that's exactly what he's gone and bought. Well, I say bought, he's gone alone. So let me know down in the comments below what you think of these signings. I, for one, I'm loving it. Um, and let me know as well who you'd like to see us maybe take a punt on. Uh, I'd be interested to read. I read all the comments. I read everything, so let me know down in the comments below. And as ever, please like and subscribe. It helps me massively and it helps me know that you're enjoying the content. Um, so I will see you later in the week for another video, possibly a podcast. Keep your eyes out for that one, and I'll see you next time, guys. Thank you.